The next stage for Occupy with Elliot Spitzer. First, before we get to Worst Persons, I think I have to thank a few people for the extraordinary response to Friday's edition of this segment. Those people would be Canada. Well, specifically, the Toronto Globe and Mail, the Toronto Star, Torontoist, Toronto Life, the National Post, CTV, the Montreal Gazette, the Winnipeg Free Press, iPolitics.ca, Yahoo News Canada, and a lot of blogs. All this because I named Toronto's mayor, Rob Ford, Friday's worst person in the world after his series of panicky and reportedly F-bomb-laden calls to 911 when an actress portraying a satirical news reporter staked him out in the driveway of his own home. The positive attention this got was only slightly more than if I had discovered Canada. I don't know if this owes to Mayor Ford's unpopularity or the traditional courteousness of the Canadian people who are just sending a kind of collective thank you note via media. So you're very welcome. And thanks especially to all of you in Canada who like my slight Canadian accent. I went to school with a lot of hockey players, and they were real, real nice guys, too. Or OC, as some of you say. OK, Blue Jays. Thus, here are Countdown South Korean nominees for tonight's First Persons in the World. The bronze to Mayor Rob Ford of Toronto. I know a good thing when I see it. Supporters of the mayor are apparently now claiming that the tape of his three calls to 911 over the ambush interview by Marg Delahunty would vindicate him that while Mayor McPanic did unleash the F-bombs, he didn't call anybody, quote, bitches, unquote, and he was calling largely because his daughter was scared and screaming, and you could hear that on the tape, which raises a simple question. Is mayor of the city, presumably having some influence over Toronto's neatly uniformed police department, why doesn't he order the tape of the call released? The runner-up, another mayor, Chris Myers of Medford, New Jersey. Hello again, Mayor Myers. Show the photo. Thank you. This is not the first time we've seen this photo. The so-called rent boy in California says the mayor paid him $500, but reneged on promises of a car and a recording studio in exchange for sex a year ago this month. Mayor Myers has given a series of increasingly bizarre quasi-denials that the photo was him, wasn't him, or that the anonymous rent boy was or wasn't his rent boy. I can't comment on something I don't know. This person hasn't come forward. Unfortunately, this is a story on rumors and allegations. These claims are ridiculous. I believe I've been wronged by stories pinned on anonymous reports. I didn't do it. God is my witness. Sorry, I'm lapsed into Belushi. Meyer says he will not resign. May not be his choice. Medford Township Council has scheduled a special meeting for Wednesday, ostensibly to talk about the mayor's pet project. No, 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 no. This is a business development. The meeting is expected to devolve into a conversation about rent boys. But our winners, the law firm of Stephen J. Baum of Buffalo, New York. You may have already seen these photos. They were sent by an appalled employee of Stephen J. Baum of Buffalo, New York, to a columnist at the New York Times. They're from the company's 2010 Halloween party. Stephen J. Baum of Buffalo, New York, is the state's largest foreclosure mill. It represents banks and mortgage servicers in their efforts to foreclose on homeowners and throw them out. It has been accused of trickery to try to evict people with steady incomes who were up to date on their mortgages. So naturally for Halloween, Stephen J. Baum encouraged its employees, all of whom would presumably live in terror of becoming the next victims of their scumbag bosses, to dress up for Halloween as homeless people carrying bottles of booze, wearing signs that mock the excuse of those who have been illegally evicted, I was never served. One of the pictures shows a coffin that depicts a lawyer who had filed a class action suit against the Stephen J. Baum Company. Another shows part of the Stephen J. Baum Company offices decorated to make them look like a row of foreclosed homes. So this is what they dress up for as Halloween? We're going to play that game, are we? Long game, Stephen J. Baum, 220 North Point Parkway, Suite G, Amherst, New York. Or if you're on Long Island, 900 Merchants Concourse, Suite 412, Westbury, New York. It's a long game, Stephen J. Baum, and there are many costumes to be worn. Being a foreclosure mill law firm is bad enough. Adding visual abuse of your victims on Halloween, poor choice. The law firm of Stephen J. Baum, scumbags, today's worst persons, Nora.